Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, communities from Texas to Florida are beginning to assist survivors and cleanup after tornadoes left scattered destruction and at least three people dead across the South. How this is expected to affect travel this weekend and into next week. Outside with live cam here at home, a little colder this morning than we were yesterday. We'll see if that trend continues into the weekend. Is this definitely feeling more like December finally? Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is December 16th. We made it through the end of the work week. Yes, we did. Happy Friday. And for a lot of kids, this is the last day before Christmas break. Oh, that's right. We'll see if they get anything done in school today. If I was a teacher, that'd be one of those days where I'd just put a movie on. Yeah, like Coaster Hage. that's really <laughs> last day, And last day of school for the mm -hmm. entire year mm -hmm. until the new year. So, uh, yeah, it is chilly this morning. Uh, we are going to be the overall trend is it's going to stay cool all the way through Christmas. Then we get that uh, that shot of some colder air coming in as well. But uh, as far as this morning, we do have some clear skies right now. Temperatures are, well, we do have a couple of freezing readings there in comfort. Uh, 38 Ball Verde. We hit 38 yesterday. We'll only make it down to 40 this morning here in town at or just a little bit below the uh, normal low temperature. Still grab a jacket. And uh, we do have a slight bit of a wind chill to, <clears throat> excuse me, to deal with. Feels like 36 Bernie Stage, 39 out there at the airport and 37 over there at Randolph. Now, as far as any clouds, got clear skies right now. This is the water vapor imagery. And you can see there's a little bit more moisture, this lighter shade of gray that's sliding on in here, and that's going to translate into some clouds moving on in. So it's going to cloud up fairly quickly throughout the latter portion of the commute and then mid morning. And then we're just going to have basically cloudy skies all day long, and that's going to help to keep temperatures down. Mountain Cedar still on the high side. It did drop from yesterday's from the previous day's reading. Pardon me. And mold is also on the high side. So this morning we will drop down a couple of more degrees and uh, clear cold light little breeze out there. So just a hint of a wind chill and then 62. Yesterday we were in the upper 60s and we'll be a little bit uh, lower than that just because of the cloud cover out there. Now we do. It's also going to be kind of windy. Slight chance for a shower late tonight and early tomorrow. Another sort of reinforcing shot of some cool air is going to be coming on in here. So yeah, it is going to be a chilly weekend. We'll look ahead all the way in through Christmas week coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. Now to the deadly storms that have been crossing the country all week. They're now taking aim at the northeast with snow, ice and rain. As ABC's Morgan Norwood explains, in the Deep South, we are getting a new image from the areas hard hit by a tornado outbreak. The holiday travel rush kicks off today with a massive storm impacting tens of millions of Americans. Heavy snow, rain and ice coating highways across dozens of states. Tens of thousands of customers were without power overnight in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland and Virginia. And parts of New York and New England could see up to two feet of snow, the first significant snowfall of the season in many areas. Because people are not used to it, they think they can drive as fast as they usually can. They can't. So we have a lot of people that are off the road, so disabled vehicles. It comes as AAA predicts an additional 2 million drivers on the road this holiday season compared to last year. Oh my God. That same system produced a days long tornado outbreak in the south. 56 twisters since Tuesday, killing at least three people. Multiple homes were damaged here in Clark County, Mississippi and in Louisiana. A tornado lifted this home off its foundation. Everything's going on. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a twister slammed a tree into this daycare. Inside, half-eaten snacks on the table and those tree branches shooting down like spikes through the classroom's roof. The children had left the room only seconds before the tornado hit. Here's the incredible thing. The owner says the kids were eating snacks in this room. They left to use the bathroom before coming back to that same room for nap time where the beds are, or were already set up. And in those moments that they were gone, that's when the tree came crashing down. No one in the daycare was injured. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. The Senate passed a stopgap bill late last night, just in time to stop a government shutdown at the end of the week. The measure passed on a 71-19 vote and now can go to President Biden to be signed into law. House members had already approved the government funding deal on Wednesday. The stopgap measure is just that. It only extends funding for another week until next Friday. But top negotiators in the House and the Senate express optimism about a framework for a full year of government funding. They believe a shutdown can be avoided, but there's very little room for error given the tight timeline before the year's end. 
Five Louisiana law enforcement officers have been charged with state crimes in the deadly 2019 arrest of Ronald Green. It's a death authorities initially blamed on a car crash before body camera video showed officers beating, stunning, and dragging the motorist. These are the first criminal charges of any kind to emerge from Green's death on a roadside in rural north, northeast Louisiana. It's a case that got little attention until an Associated Press investigation exposed a cover-up and prompted scrutiny of top Louisiana state police officers in a sweeping U.S. Justice Department review. The U.S. Immigration Court system's backlog is at an all-time high. An analysis by Syracuse University found there are more than 2 million cases pending. The largest backlog down in Miami-Dade County, Florida, with more than 100,000 pending cases. Next is Harris County over in Houston with more than 75,000. And then Los Angeles with 74,000 cases. A large portion of these are for people seeking asylum. Wait time for a hearing on those claims is now about four years. According to the analysis, immigration courts have increased the pace of hearings, but still can't keep up with the influx of new case filings. 436, 43 degrees. There's a darker side to dark chocolate. We're going to tell you which bars may contain unhealthy levels of heavy metals. Both UTSA and UIW getting ready for big games today in Florida and North Dakota. We'll have a preview. And let's look outside with Trans Sky looking over at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller Road. Things are quiet, but things are moving this Friday morning. And outside with Light Cam. Today, it is Stephanie's right shoulder that is cold. <laughs> <laughs> What's that laugh? <laughs> That's your Friday chuckle. You're watching GMSA. We're just getting started. Sports coming up. They're going to talk to Mike, and I know Stephen's already in the house right now, keeping an eye on something. We'll talk to him later as well. In morning sports, we're now just hours away from the kickoff. Today's Duluth Trading Cure Bowl that features the UTSA Roadrunners and the Troy Trojans. Two top 25 teams and two conference champs collide in kickoff in Orlando this afternoon at 2 o'clock San Antonio time. Weather is not expected to be a factor, but it was last night. Roadrunners held a walkthrough and took the team picture at Exploria Stadium yesterday, and they got it all done before. It started to rain. However, because of the bad weather, the Cure Bowl had to move the U.S. Hunger Project food packing event indoors to a convention center there in Orlando. Both UTSA and Troy packed bags of red lentil jambalaya while pep bands for both schools played. We're told the two sides packed approximately 20,000 bags that will be donated to families in need across Central Florida. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, we, we were working as a team, as bonding, it's great. That's just good for kids to realize there's a whole lot more to this than them, right? Not that any of our kids are spoiled, but they've been the best athlete, the best player for a long time, right? It's good to see that you can use your platform to do good for others, and those are always really good things for kids. Wednesday afternoon, UTSA went to Universal Studios and Universal Islands of Adventure to have some fun. The bowl season kicks off today with two games, including Troy and UTSA in the Cure Bowl. Good luck, Roadrunners. Meanwhile, University of Incarnate Word Cardinals are in Fargo, North Dakota for their first ever trip to FCS National Semifinals. Cardinals left UIW yesterday on a plane that took them about as far north as you can get in the lower 48. The high today in Fargo is 25 degrees, a low of 10 with snow. Lots of snow. Good thing their opponent, 17 time and defending national champ North Dakota State, plays all their home games in the Fargo Dome. That's where UIW will be nine and a half point underdogs to the Bison. And that doesn't bother the Cardinals, who already made school history on the football field with their 12 and 1 record. First time in school history, we're all trying to just do something that's never been done. I mean, obviously, we've done that this far, but we're not trying to stop here. Now, prior to kickoff tonight at 7, which will be broadcast live on ESPN2, UIW announced associate head coach Clint Killo has promoted to head coach of the Cardinals. That's as G.J. Kinney makes his transition to San Marcos at the new head coach of Texas State University. Right down Main Street, the Greyhounds get a big send off up in Bernie yesterday as they head to Jerry World in Arlington for their first ever trip to the state championship game with an undefeated 15-0 record. That's what will face 
14 and 1 China Spring in the Class 4A Division 1 State Championship game today at 3 o'clock. Good luck, Greyhounds. Meanwhile, the Poth Pirates taking the field at AT&T Stadium for the program's first state title game since 68, taking on Gunter for the Class 3A Division 2 Championship. Second quarter, Tigers up 7-0, adding to the lead. Ashton Bennett takes the handoff right through the D for an 11-yard touchdown. Second of the game makes it 14-0. Pirates did not, rather did get on the board when Robbie finds uh, Gabriel Solansky for a 30-yard touchdown pass late in regulation, but the Pirates fall big, 42-7. to Congratulations to Poth on a great season. I know everybody down there is super proud of you guys. Now it's time to sit back, take a breath, and enjoy the holidays. Yes, enjoy the Christmas break. Great job there. Time now, 443 and 43 degrees for now. Many people crave some good dark chocolate for a little snack sometimes, but some of it contains ingredients you may want to avoid. We're going to show you which ones are better for you. And next, an important new study cautioning parents about kids and TikTok and their health. Hi, welcome back to Time Now, 446. A new study says TikTok is sending harmful content to teens within minutes of creating an account. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new study cautioning parents about kids and TikTok. The app's intuitive algorithm recommends posts on the For You page that may interest users based on the content they share and interact with. It's the speed and ferocity with which that algorithm is pushing addictive, dangerous content to children that really worried us. Researchers at the Center for Countering Digital Hate created accounts pretending to be 13-year-old girls in the U.S., U.K., Australia, and Canada. 13 is the minimum age requirement to be on the platform. Within minutes, it was sending self-harm and suicide content. And every 39 seconds, our test accounts received some sort of harmful content. Experts now urging parents to stay on top of their children's social media usage. And we'll have much more on this study and what parents need to know coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, dark chocolate may be considered a healthy indulgence, but testing by Consumer Reports found a dark side to it. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, some of it can contain worrisome levels of heavy metals. Chocolate, a mood lifter, energy booster, and yummy treat. And with dark chocolate, you get antioxidants, but that may not be all you're getting. Our tests found concerning levels of cadmium or lead, two toxic heavy metals, in most of the dark chocolate bars we tested. Consumer Reports tested 28 dark chocolate bars. The results? For 23 of the bars, eating just an ounce a day would put an adult over a level that CR's experts and public health authorities say may be harmful. Consistent long-term exposure to even small amounts of heavy metals can lead to a variety of health problems, including kidney damage, hypertension, and reproductive issues. It's even riskier for kids. In young children, the metals can cause developmental problems, affect brain development, and lead to lower IQ. In response, several of the manufacturers whose chocolate had higher levels of heavy metals said heavy metals occur naturally in soil, and they take steps to try to reduce it. So what can a chocolate lover do? The tests found that cadmium levels tend to increase with the higher cacao percentages. So if you're craving dark chocolate, Consumer Reports says go for a 55% instead of an 85% bar. And if you eat dark chocolate every day, you may want to cut back to just a couple of ounces a week. And don't think organic dark chocolate is any better. Their tests showed that the heavy metal levels in dark chocolate were just as concerning. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with Transguy looking over at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller Road. A very quiet Friday morning. I usually find Fridays very busy, but I'm sure that will change in just a matter of an hour. You bet. And folks will start heading out this weekend and yep. next week for destinations near and far for the Christmas holiday. And Christmas is getting closer. You guys are a little bit closer to maybe having a handle on what might happen next week. It is going to be cold. Okay. We, we, we are that. still we looking at um, in at least a, our first freeze if we don't hit it by a Sunday morning is going to be close to it. But uh, yeah, that, that big mass of Arctic air will invade the United States. Uh, as far as like just sitting right on top of us, no, but we will get a pretty ge decent chunk of it. So, And this is late for a first freeze, is it not? Uh, first freeze is usually, oh, is it December 3rd? I'll have to double check on that okay. one. Okay. 
taxing my, my mind this You're early welcome. morning, <laughs> so <laughs> taxing my memory. All right, here's uh, yesterday out there in Dilly. Oh my goodness, yes, definitely God's country. A lot of folks are going to be seeing a sunrise like this, but uh, since that's going to be a different story. So we've got a lot of clear skies out there as of right now. Clouds will start to work their way in here fairly quickly. 43 in town, freezing comfort Kerrville at 33 and a bit of a wind chill just in a couple of spots. We have a little bit of a breeze here in town, so that 43 feels like 39 degrees. Needless to say, bundle up and you're going to want a jacket all day long. Yesterday, it was if you're in the sunshine, it was pretty nice uh, with that. We got up in the mid upper 60s around much of the area and this morning we're going to be bottoming out at 40 and then warming up. <clears throat> excuse me. And then those clouds continue to move on in here thicken up throughout the morning hours and I'm just looking at basically cloudy skies. I mean, maybe a peak of sunshine later on this afternoon, but 62 for a high temperature. So we will be actually slightly below normal later on today. Here's the uh, humidity and what this shows. Obviously, it's not very humid out there whatsoever. We've got these dew points in the 40s, 20s in the hill country. And just as things try to increase, here comes this next front, which is going to be moving through. It's not going to be a huge blast, but it will sort of reinforce the cool air that's in place and keep us even cooler tomorrow. So this really dry air is going to be moving on in here, which is going to work against any rain. We do have a couple of shots at a maybe a sprinkly shower or two as that front moves on through. But with the air so dry, a lot of that may actually evaporate before it reaches the ground tomorrow morning, but still keeping that uh, that chance of a shower in here. So you can see we do cloud up later on today and then there's those few little uh, showers late tonight, early tomorrow morning. But again, with the really, really dry air down here at the surface, it may evaporate. There'll still be a couple of sprinkles around here. Then we're going to clear out somewhat Saturday in the afternoon and then overnight into Sunday. And that's when we're, it's really going to get cold around here. We were talking about that big storm system, which is still, I mean, look at that thing, still spinning around the Great Lakes. A lot of snow on the backside of it, that wrap around, and then this mess up there to the northeast. So talking about traveling, if you got any, any flights that have to go through bigger hubs off to the northeast, you definitely want to check on that because that is just a mess. So this cold air is brewing. Siberia is a massive landmass, and that's where a lot of the cold air in the wintertime just kind of it just sits there and, and stews and brews. Right now it is 49 below at uh, Yakutsk or something like that out there. Anyway, that cold air is going to work its way across the Arctic and the Bering Sea. Yakutsk. Yakutsk. Thank yes. you. Gesundheit. And then the cold core will continue to kind of work its way down in our direction. The heart of it, though, I think is going to be staying off here to the north and east, but still we're going to be pretty cold and staying cold really all this week in through Christmas. And it looks like even the uh, few days after Christmas, 56 degrees, mostly cloudy skies at noon today. And then, like I said, I'm just going for basically cloudy skies. 62. It's going to be breezy as well. A couple of showers going to be possible. Later on this evening and tomorrow, again, with that really dry air, a lot of it may not reach the ground. However, don't be surprised if there are a couple of sprinkles tomorrow and then only mid 50s, but some sunshine in the afternoon. That's a bit of a change. And then Sunday, 55 degrees, clouds come back in. Better chance of rain on Monday and we stay just in the 50s for high temperatures next week. Winter begins Wednesday. That big front looks like it's going to be coming through later on Thursday. Hanukkah on the calendar. Big yep. snowflake yes. for first day of winter. Just a few days away from adding Christmas yes, icons. Indeed. Week from Sunday. Will it be Santa this year? Have you decided which uh, emoji or icon you want to use oh, yet? Oh yeah. I haven't yet. I think, <coughs> Excuse well, me. Santa. Probably just the tree on there. Okay. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah. Santa's yeah. good too. Maybe for Christmas Eve because that's when he's the busiest. And Yakutsk works better with a Siberian ac accent. Very heavy. <laughs> Yakutsk. Right? Like take some, smoke a cigar, drink some cough syrup, and then do it, and you're you're good. Yakutsk. 453, 44 degrees. Avatar: The Way of Water debuts in theaters across the U.S today. Plus, Mariah Carey's Christmas classic is in the news yet again. The Avatar movie expected to make a big splash in terms of sales at the box office this weekend here in America. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. There are a handful of movies opening this weekend, but only one anyone's really paying attention to. James Cameron's Avatar sequel, The Way of Water, is expected to debut with a minimum $150 million domestically, maybe as much as $175 million. Let's get it done. Both bows would be more than double what the 2009 original earned its opening weekend. 
13 years later, Avatar is now the all-time highest-grossing film in the world with more than $2.92 billion. Glee and American Horror Story creator Ryan Murphy will receive the Carol Burnett Award at January's Golden Globes, recognizing his award-winning body of work. Four years ago today, Mariah Carey's holiday classic All I Want for Christmas Is You topped the Billboard Hot 100 for the very first time, 25 years after it was first released. And ZZ Top singer and guitarist Billy Gibbons is 73 Friday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And the time now, 457 and 44 degrees for now. It's still being called a perfect storm of illness. Why COVID-19 cases are rising in at least 90% of the country and how the White House is responding to the situation. Plus, what San Antonio police are saying this morning about a road rage shooting that left a man dead on the city's southeast side. And this morning, as we get the morning commute winding uh, up, ramping up rather, 410 at Jackson Keller. A few cars on the road. There goes a tanker truck, a guy busy out there earning his living. Steven Cavazos is in the studio. We'll check in with him coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And I don't have a dad. You took him away from me. Road rage leads to a shooting and a man's death. What San Antonio police are saying this morning about the search for a suspect. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. With holiday gatherings just around the corner, top health officials are now warning of a surge in viral infections. What the White House is doing to try to prevent that. The details coming up. And taking a look out there with a live cam this morning, we're at 44 degrees. Not as cold as yesterday morning, but still cold. And a good morning to you, everybody. It is Friday, December 16th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. The end of the week, work week for a lot of people and for a lot of kids, the end of school for this year. Let's jump right into a Friday forecast, Mike. Have a jacket as you are heading out the door and you're going to get some use out of it throughout not only today, the weekend, but next week. And it looks like even going in toward uh, New Year's as the trend is, it is going to be staying on the cooler side. We're at 43 right now. Dew point stands at 40. Uh, still really nice out there. Still clear skies, but just up a couple of degrees. We're basically at our normal low right now and uh, we do have a uh, high temperature today in store of 62 so we're going to have some clouds moving on in here and that's going to hold temperatures down a little bit compared to yesterday and slightly below normal so jackets probably still going to be a pretty good idea throughout the rest of today the aquifer dropped down one tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading and it was interesting mountain cedar despite the fact that we had a lot of wind wednesday afternoon yesterday's reading had dropped down slightly from the previous day still on the high side I don't know, it's kind of getting me a little bit. Mold is also on the high side. The updated uh, pollen count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning, of course. All right, there's a hint of a breeze out there, so 43 feels like 40 in town, and there's really not much. That's about the only uh, wind chill, if you will, to uh, deal with, but basically it is just uh, grab a coat and bundle up. 33 Comfort, 34 Kerrville, so out in your backyard, obviously it may be below freezing as of right now. And throughout the rest of today, first of all, clear cold right now, but clouds going to move in here fairly quickly mid morning. And then by noon, most of the cloudy skies cloudy. If there's a leftover peak of sunshine later on today, great, but I'm just going for cloudy skies. Cool, staying in the low 60s, breezy and a chance for a shower late as a front moves on through here. This is not going to be a huge blast. It just is going to sort of reinforce the cool air in place. So that's going to keep us in the mid 50s tomorrow. Could be a shower, like I said, overnight into early tomorrow morning, but the air is going to be so dry down here at the surface. A lot of that may evaporate before it reaches the ground. Sunday, very cold start. Some folks may see freezing again Sunday morning, mid 50s. Clouds come back in here and then do it all again as far as another chance of rain going into Monday. Probably a better chance of rain on Monday. We will take a look at Christmas week. See how cool it's going to be. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority heading out for, as we were saying, the last day of school for the yeah. year. Mr. Cavazos, are you going to make good grades this year? Yeah, A-plus for the traffic, Mike, oh, but uh, we'll see about me. <laughs> hey, let's get a quick look at this Friday morning commute. Hey, it was cold enough for me to wear the turtleneck today, so listen to Mike's advice. But uh, thankfully, right now, things aren't too bad on the road front. 37 at Pecan Valley. We have a pretty quiet start to this morning. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that any incidents, uh, we didn't go without any any incidents. Let's just go ahead and talk about what we have happening here on the far west side. A crash reported along Loop 1604 Southbound at Gulebda Road. 
I was talking to friends over at Trans Guide this morning. The crash actually has already cleared out, but uh, Texas Hero Trucks are actually still on the scene. They're helping out some of the road construction crews that are still working to improve the roadways out there. So just give them plenty of room. Let's give you now a wide look at the map. And as I mentioned, not a whole lot to show you out there. Lots of green. So, hey, take advantage of these empty roadways. If you have to travel in the next few minutes or so, this would probably be the best time to do it. But still, give yourself plenty of time. All right, travel times. If you're traveling into the Alamo City, perhaps from Seguin, you're in the green as well. 31 minutes right now at this hour. Looks like a little more than half an hour. Usual drive time on 87 northbound. Traveling in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it's a 28-minute drive time to the Alamo City. One last look here at Transguide 10 at ProBant. Just a few folks out there this morning. Now, while it is pretty quiet and busy in some spots like 35 at Brooklyn, we still have plenty of road construction to be on the lookout for. I'll have updates on that in the next few minutes. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was ejected out of her vehicle following a crash on the far west side earlier this morning. So this happened around 2 a.m. near the intersection of Loop 1604 and Westwood Loop. Police say the woman was in a red car and was traveling on the southbound access road of 1604 when someone in a black vehicle pulled off Westward Loop and crashed right into her. Police say the driver of the black car pulled into a parking lot, got out and ran away. The woman was taken to the hospital in critical condition. San Antonio police still investigating a road rage shooting that left one man dead on the southeast side. It happened at the corner of Goliad and Lebanon this morning. The man responsible for shooting him is still on the run. Last night, a man in his 50s with, was, with, was with his daughter, rather, driving to take care of some errands when two vehicles blocked both sides of the street. Apparently, a heated argument broke out between the victim and the driver of one of the vehicles. The man in his 50s got out of the vehicle and approached the other driver, and that's when police say someone in the vehicle uh, the man approached pulled a gun and shot him. The victim's daughter described the suspects that took off as two young Hispanic males. And I don't have a dad. You took him away from me. He was supposed to get old and die of old age, not because some stupid kids shot him. The daughter describes the two vehicles as a Camaro and a Challenger. She says the shots were fired from someone inside that Dodge Challenger. If you have any information, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers or San Antonio Police. Criminal cases in Bear County are facing challenges. A source tells us that more than a dozen people have left the Bear County District Attorney's Office. That same source says 16 people resigned and more could follow. A number of high profile cases are coming up in the new year. So a staffing shortage this significant is not good and judges are worried. These jury trials are set months in advance. And so only certain prosecutors know what's going on in every particular case. Without that prosecutor being available, cases have to be reset. That means it could delay the justice system. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez's office did not want to give an interview. However, the office sent a statement out mentioning retirements and a shift in positions due to the election. You can read the full statement right now on our website at KSAT.com. With Christmas right around the corner, hospitals are feeling strained combating various viruses. As ABC's M1 reports, that includes everything from COVID-19 to strep. This morning, hospitals around the country treating an inrush of patients battling a perfect storm of viruses. A lot of these patients are very sick. In preparation of this winter surge, the Biden administration is once again offering households free COVID-19 testing kits at covidtest.gov. We still had some resources left. White House health officials urging people to test themselves if they have symptoms and before visiting with family this holiday season. The president's plan comes as the country faces a rise in respiratory viruses, COVID-19, RSV and the flu. The flu is rising in many parts of the country. We're probably the worst flu uh, outbreak we've seen in a decade. One boy in San Diego County so sick with two strains of the flu, he was put on a ventilator and two weeks later still in the ICU. His father urging others to get vaccinated. It was so bad that I was scared that he wasn't going to make it. Now, the World Health Organization is also tracking a potential uptick in invasive group A strep infections, a sometimes life-threatening illness among children. Invasive group A strep is a disease, are, is a cluster of diseases actually caused by the same bacteria. And when people sometimes talk about flesh-eating bacteria, that's usually the bacteria that we're uh, kind of pointing to. Uh, it can cause sepsis. Uh, most of those patients, you know, their illness is obviously worse than the typical 
uh, strep throat infections. One doctor saying the ongoing shortage of the antibiotic amoxicillin could also be exacerbating the situation. The overlapping viral surges are causing some patients with back-to-back -back illnesses to suffer for longer, weeks, sometimes months, rather than days, according to the Washington Post. M1, ABC News, Washington. 509, now 43 degrees. Instagram launches a new tool to help hacked users, how it can help those affected regain account access. Rodent problems still plaguing a San Antonio sports bar. We'll go behind the kitchen door next. And let's take a look out there with live cam, 43 degrees, still chilly out there. You're going to need a coat. And later today, it's going to be actually kind of nice. We'll be right back. All right, let's talk San Antonio restaurants and bars. A northeast side sports bar with a rodent problem. And a west side bar and Chinese restaurant racked up health violations during recent inspections. Tim Gerber goes behind the kitchen door for some answers. you doing? Is there a manager available I could talk to? After their recent health inspection report, I had some questions for the staff at La Perla del Pacifico Sports Bar located in the 2600 block of Northeast Loop 410. But there was a language barrier. I do not, no. Okay, it's getting um, muy little. Uh, Nobody little speaks little. Uh, English? Okay. I wanted to know why they got another low score on their health inspection. La Perla del Pacifico Sports Bar. I just featured them on BKD back in July when they got a 76. When the inspector visited again on November 14th, he gave them a 77. Food inside the walk-in cooler had to be thrown out because it was out of the required temperature. They also had to toss out rusty, heavily dented cans. Dirty magnetic strips were holding clean knives. The inspector found rodent droppings throughout the business and other signs of rodent activity. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Bombshells located in the 8400 block of Highway 151 fizzled out with a 79. Two tubs of chicken were thrown out because the cold unit was too warm. The inspector also found food in the cold unit that had been returned by a customer that needed to be removed. An employee was caught picking up raw chicken from the floor with gloves on, but they didn't wash their hands after that. Another was caught touching food with their bare hands. They were also told to hire pest control services to deal with gnats and flies. <laughs> Beijing Express in the 8000 block of Marbach earned a 79 and a reinspection. They had black mold-like substance growing in the ice machine. There was more mold buildup on the pipes and handles of a sink. None of the employees washed their hands once during the inspection, and there were multiple dead roaches, and the back door was found wide open. They were also storing food storage containers on the floor. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. By 15, 43 degrees. TikTok has started testing a new landscape mode. We're going to tell you who can use it so far. All the snow just melts away when I'm with you. Oh, baby, baby, will you please give me a clue? Cause today. jewelry and receive a free limited edition bracelet as our special gift to you. Where would the world be without nurses, without its innovators, its lifesavers, its fierce patient advocates? For healthcare to work, it takes nurses. That's why Johnson & Johnson has been a proud champion of nurses since 1897. In today's Tech Bytes, a new way to solve Instagram problems. Instagram.com slash hacked lets users get help recovering a hacked account and reporting impersonating accounts. It also helps with a forgotten password. TikTok is trying out a new landscape video mode. The goal is to give users a better viewing experience and to challenge other rival platforms by appealing to people interested in informational and learning videos. Select users worldwide now have the landscape option.
Finally, Spotify is slimming its live audio show options. Reports say at least six shows have already ended or have announced that they're going off the air soon. Live audio programming saw growth during the height of the pandemic, but interest has cooled since then. That's too bad for Rolling Stones fans who love to stream mix tapes. Mix tapes. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. I wondered where he was going with he that. He had one. to say it twice. Yeah, if you have to say it twice. I still, it didn't land with me. I don't, I don't <laughs> like Mick Jagger. Jagger. Oh, the lead okay. singer, like tapes. His, his tapes, yes, but, yeah. or, or mix, like the eggs. It's okay. Mm. It's okay. Sorry, <laughs> right. right, Andrew. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning. We're back here. We're going to talk to Mike in just a moment. How are yeah. things looking on the road so far? Uh, quiet, and that's mm -hmm. why we like it. Friday morning, we give the commute an A, plus, as we said earlier. But let's get a quick look around town, see what else is happening. Because thankfully, as we give you that wide look at Transkai 37 at Pecan Valley, it's just a whole lot of nothing. If you want to maybe head out the door in the next few minutes and get some quiet time, the roads may be the best place to do it. Uh, but just always be on the lookout. We still have a few other drivers out there right now, 410 North at Ingram, one or two making their way on by. Now, we did have some issues over on the far west side of Bear County, a crash that was reported earlier in the morning. I believe we'll have a live report from Katrina a little bit later on. But right now, the map's pretty green. So great way to start the morning. Great way to drive off into the weekend. And if you have travel plans, just make sure that you drive carefully and check your vehicle before you get out on the roadway for any major road trips. But let's go ahead and get you to some construction taking place here. 281 over on the north side of San Antonio. This is something that part of it wrapped up earlier in the week. Uh, some asphalt work will continue to take place this week. Weekend, December 17th wrap pretty quickly though on Sunday, December 18th. However, it does begin at six in the morning should finish around five in the afternoon. Alternating southbound lane closures from Bulverde Road to Overlook Parkway is what drivers can expect to see out there. But hey, head over to our website, ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of all the closures. But right now it doesn't look like anything too bad out on the roadways, Mike. Or, you know, if you want to drive around and look at some of the lights in the neighborhood, tomorrow night's going to be a really good night for it because we will be clearing out uh, somewhat. This evening, not bad. There's a small chance for a sprinkler or two, but well, well, even, you know, any night is always a good night to just drive around and look at some of the uh, the Christmas lights, get a nice big mug of hot chocolate out there. Got a lot of clear skies right now. You can see like an airplane just uh, flying around off to destinations unknown and we're going to have a fantastic sunrise this morning. Temperatures, yep, freezing, close to freezing, probably freezing in your backyard out there in parts of the hill country. 37 Ball Verde, Lotus 45, 43 out there at the airport. So we are up just a couple of degrees compared to yesterday. Yesterday we did bottom out at 38. We'll stay up a notch or two above that uh, down, down to 40 this morning. So slightly below normal clear skies to start off clouds continue to thicken up throughout the day we'll make it up into the mid 50s at noon and then i'm just going for basically cloudy skies that is going to help the hold temperatures down so we'll stay at 62 also it's going to start to get breezy later on this afternoon as that front begins to work its way on through here and that will again help with the clouds and maybe squeeze out a little sprinkle. The better chance, though, is going to be overnight, although a lot of really dry air is going to move on in here. So some of this may actually not actually not even reach the ground because it will evaporate because, like I said, the air is so dry. But there will be just a couple of showers still hanging around here, and that's going to be in the morning hours tomorrow. And then we are going to be clearing out by later on in the afternoon. So again, that would be a, a better evening probably than this evening to go drive around, look at the uh, Christmas lights. And then it's going to be really cold Sunday morning. Now, as far as high temperatures, I mean, we are definitely going to be staying on the, the chilly side. Normal high, average high right now is 65 degrees. So throughout the weekend, we're going to be about 10 below that kind of modifying a little bit, but really consistent. Then you look at uh, Friday, that's when the, the big front's going to be moving through here. That'll be on Thursday, and so that'll keep us very chilly throughout the day on Friday. Sunday morning, a lot of folks are going to be, if you haven't already hit freezing, or if you, even if you have, you're going to be hitting it again by Sunday morning with some clearer skies around here, and we'll stay at or slightly below normal. And then again, by late next week is when that big, big batch of Arctic air moves on into the United States, and we get a fairly decent chunk of it around here. 56 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. So again, clouds will continue to thicken up throughout the day. 62 for a high temperature. Breezy today and maybe a shower around here tonight, especially overnight. Although again, the odds are not that great at all, even into tomorrow morning, but just one or two of them. 54 tomorrow, 55 on Sunday. We'll start off with clearer skies Sunday. Clouds come back in here. The better chance of any rain this week is going to be on Monday, albeit not any sort of drop buster, but yeah. like I said, the better chance there. Yeah. And then 
again, uh, winter officially begins on Wednesday. Let's get that rain out of here before that cold air mass works its way oh, in here. Oh, goodness. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yep. when that air mass comes in, it's going to just be so, so dry mm -hmm. that nothing that you're hoping for. All right. Uh, All right, Snowman. Love the mm -hmm. tie, by the way. Yes. 524, 43 degrees. You got snowman? I got snowman. Ah. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I'm the old odd man out with Christmas trees. That's okay, it's Christmas. Still ahead, Trevor Noah is set to host the Grammys for the third time, plus why a CNN travel show is getting canceled. The Grammys keep a host for the third time, plus a popular food and travel show is being canceled. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. Trevor Noah recently wrapped up his run as the host of The Daily Show and already has another hosting gig on the horizon, the Grammys. It'll be his third consecutive time emceeing music's biggest night, which will be broadcast live from Los Angeles February 5th on CBS and stream live and on demand on Paramount+. Plus. Ciao, Hi. Hi, ciao. Welcome in my village, I welcome in my house. This is beautiful, your place. Mm -hmm. too. CNN is saying Arriva Derci to its popular food and travel show, Stanley Tucci, Searching for Italy. A new cost-cutting strategy prompted the network to cancel the Emmy-winning show after two seasons. Tucci says he hopes to do more seasons if the show is picked up on another network or streamer. It was very sweet and humbling. Ryan Murphy is set to receive the Carol Burnett Career Achievement Award at next month's Golden Globes. The TV mogul has created a number of famous shows, including Glee, Nip Tuck, American Horror Story, and American Crime Story. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. 528, 43 degrees. And still ahead, a Texas judge has ruled to preserve another Trump-era policy. What that means now for the migrants trying to cross over from Mexico. And up next, the sixth graduation season is here, so we're celebrating the best and brightest grads across the Alamo City area. The amazing story of one woman who walked the stage at UTSA. More trouble at the border hours after the Biden administration unveiled a plan for when Title 42 ends next week. A Texas judge has ruled to preserve another Trump era policy remain in Mexico. And another cold morning here. Let's look out there with live cam looking at the downtown skyline. Very nice, but you know what? 43 degrees, not as cold as yesterday. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. It is December 16th. Hey, happy Friday. We're going to check in with you in just a minute, but mm -hmm. we'll check the Friday, 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 Friday roadways. Yeah, we uh, did have... We have a quiet start right now, uh, but unfortunately there were some issues that took place a little bit earlier in the overnight hours. Let's go ahead and get a quick peek around town if we can. Actually, I think we'll do the flip flop. With oh, this is the half hour we go to Mike first. To yes. To the okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's okay. Huh. Well, that, that was a nice little tease though. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of clear skies, but notice off in the distance, just a couple of these clouds hanging around here and we will start to see more clouds move on in. We've had some clear skies overnight. That's allowed temperatures to, uh, to drop down and just a couple of them. You can still see a few of the stars out there, though, should be a decent sunrise this morning. And temperatures we were talking about is at 43, up a few degrees from yesterday. We did end up bottoming out at 38 yesterday, and we'll stay now. The dew point is up to 40. You can't drop down below that number. So I um, was going for 40, maybe uh, it'll just be low 40s later on this morning, right about a normal low, though. And now we're at freezing in uh, comfort 36 Bernie stage and 45 in Lotus. Wind chill temperatures, not much out there. Uh, just shave off a couple of notches here and there like out at the airport it feels like 40 as opposed to 43 not bad but just enough to add that little little nip to things mountain cedar still on the high side as is mold the updated count comes out in a couple of hours 56 at noon again clouds continue to thicken up throughout the day 62 for a high temperature it is going to be breezy we've got another front that's going to be working its way on through here late this afternoon that's going to help to keep temperatures in check along with the clouds as that front moves through it may try and squeeze out a shower or two kind of doubt it. I mean, just one or two of them. That's going to be in the especially the overnight hours and early, early tomorrow. And then we'll start to clear out again. Talk about cold temperatures. Sunday morning is going to be the coldest of the weekend. And then high temperatures though this weekend aren't going to be any any heat wave at all. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Plus, of course, a look ahead in through Christmas week. Now, Stephen, 
take it away. All right, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Let's get a quick look around town. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, the commute's not too bad right now. Uh, you can see there 90 at Medeo Creek, just a few folks making their way out there this morning. But as I did mention, we did have some trouble problems on the far west side of Bear County where we had that crash reported. Uh, 1604 near Culebra Road is where TxDOT had pinpointed that crash, but I did speak to our friends over at TransGuide and it does look like it's cleared out. And right now what we can expect to see are just some quiet roadways, but uh, it's been uh, no other issue. There's been no other issues other than that particular incident. Right now, travel times are also in good shape. I-10, that journey from Bernie, 24 minutes at this point. Uh, 281, if you're traveling in the southbound lanes, you're still on the green as well. 27 minutes is what you can expect to the Alamo City. And right now, not too awful from New Braunfels, 25 minutes on I-35 southbound. So let's get you back here on Transguide 37 at Pecan Valley, 410 at Jackson Keller. Commute's getting just a little bit busier in some spots. In other plot, uh, spots, it is pretty quiet, but we're going to watch things closely and have those updates right here throughout GMSA. Mark, Seth. Thank you, Stephen. Two cars crashed overnight, but San Antonio police say they have found only one driver. They believe the other one ran away. A woman, meanwhile, is in the hospital with injuries. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened near Loop 410, not far from Culebra Road. And Katrina, we understand that woman was ejected from her car. Well, that's right. Police told us that they found her critically injured and lying in a ditch along this access road. This is actually 1604, uh, but they say that the other driver, again, did take off. Now, police believe that she was the driver of one car, but they are still looking for that second driver. They've been on this case since about 2 o'clock this morning. Uh, they say that they were called to this access road of Loop 1604 near Westwood Loop. That's a street in this area. Police believe the woman was driving alongside the highway when a black Camaro came off that side street and hit her. The woman's car spun around and she was thrown from it, landing in the ditch. And again, police say she suffered critical injuries. Well, after the crash, police say that other driver uh, did take off. He drove away, but then for some reason came back, got out of the car and ran away. And again, they still have not found him just yet. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A federal judge is pausing the Biden administration's efforts to terminate the Trump era at remain in Mexico policy. Yesterday's ruling comes amid preparations for the end of a different immigration restriction, Title 42. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on what it all means for people seeking asylum. It's a blow against the Biden administration for now, but it's not over. A federal judge in Texas is preserving one Trump era immigration policy just as another is set to end. The so-called remain in Mexico policy prevents migrants seeking asylum from waiting in the U.S. during that process. The U.S. Supreme Court initially ruled President Joe Biden had the authority to get rid of it, but it sent the case back to the lower court. Right now the question is, did they do it properly under the APA? There are notice provisions, public comment provisions, you know, they're, they're specifically spelled out ways that you can enact policy under the Administrative Procedures Act. The judge ruled against the White House yesterday. Analysts say the administration likely will appeal and request a stay. If they get that, we'll go back to where we were before. Meanwhile, Title 42 is set to end next Wednesday. It largely bars asylum seeking at the southern border, citing public health. Yesterday, the Biden administration unveiled this six-point plan to prepare for the expected migrant surge. Already, a senior border official reports an influx in the El Paso sector. The mayor of that city says crossings could reach 5,000 a day starting next week. This Venezuelan mother says if her family gets a new life in the U.S., the first thing they'll do is thank God. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Two tech industry groups are asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review a hotly debated Texas social media law. The law restricts social media platforms' ability to moderate content known as House Bill 20. The law will make it illegal to suppress user posts or accounts. The petitioners say it denies them editorial control over their own websites and forces them to publish speech they don't wish to disseminate. Legal experts say if the Supreme Court agrees to hear the Texas case, it could become a lightning rod in the white rod rather in the wider debate over online speech and the rights of technology platforms to manage their own websites. 
The U.S. Senate has passed the sweeping annual defense authorization bill. The legislation passed last night authorizes $858 billion in national defense funding and rescinds the U.S. military's COVID vaccine mandate. It also contains a nearly 5% pay raise for service members, along with provisions to strengthen and power cybersecurity capabilities. The Senate bill also bolsters support for Ukraine and NATO. So that had already passed in the House. It now goes to President Joe Biden's desk to be signed into law. The CIA says the agency has now released all of its documents involving the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Thursday, the National Archives released nearly 13,000 government documents related to JFK's assassination. The president was shot and killed in Dallas back on November 22nd, 1963. Congress passed legislation in 1992 requiring the release of all remaining government records about the assassination. They gave the original deadline of 2017, but presidents have extended that deadline, including, former, uh, including President Biden and former President Trump. This is the largest dump of files from the National Archives JFK assassination record collection since 2018. President Biden has also ordered the remaining records to be publicly released by June 30th of next year. Time now, 540 and 43 degrees for now. You typically visit the ER in a time of need. Find out why millions of people are being diagnosed incorrectly in emergency rooms every year. And it's about to get even colder in our area. Up next, better ways to keep your home warm without spiking your utility bill. Down about 43 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Mike says, oh, just wait. Yeah, a big cold air mass is headed our way. We'll get an update on the forecast as we look ahead to the first day of winter. And then also on the seven day, we'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. The government study found more than 7 million people are misdiagnosed in U.S. emergency rooms every year. That means about 1 in 18 patients are getting the wrong diagnosis. According to the Department of Health and Human Services report, 2.6 million people had preventable harm done to them. Another 370,000 are permanently disabled or died because of the misdiagnosis. The most missed conditions include stroke, heart attack, aortic aneurysm, spinal cord injury, and blood clots. Researchers say non-specific or atypical symptoms are the strongest factors leading to diagnostic mistakes. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has updated its growth chart for obese children and teens. Healthcare providers use standardized charts to track growth from infancy through adolescence, but they haven't kept up with rising obesity levels. The old chart was based on data from 1963 to 1980 and only went up to the 97th percentile. The new extended one incorporates recent data and goes to higher body mass index values. The CDC says it isn't changing the chart for those who are not obese. According to the agency, more than 4.5 million kids and teens were considered severely obese back in 2017 and 2018. Time now. It's 544 and 43 degrees for now. I can't see Transguide from here, but it's about to pop up. And, yep, it looks, it looks good at 281 and Hildebrand right now. As we wait for the sun to come up on this Friday morning, we're going to talk to Stephen and Mike live on GMSA when we come back. Cold weather across the country this week provides a stark reminder that home heating costs are going up. CNN's Karen Kafa takes a look at why prices are up across the board and what you can do to lower your utility bill. Households are paying a lot more this year to guard against winter's chill. The U.S. Energy Information Administration projected most households would see a jump in heating costs based on NOAA's forecast of a slightly colder winter. We expect because of a colder winter, folks are going to be using more energy to heat their homes. The cost of heating a home with natural gas forecast to rise 28% for the winter, October through March. Heating oil up 27% over last winter. Electric heating costs up 10%. Most of the push in oil and natural gas prices here at home, a collision of supply and demand with uncertainty abroad, like that from Russia's war in Ukraine. As this war continues and as uh, nations choose to further sanction Russia, 
you know, that, that would have a large effect on the way commodities are produced, the way commodities move around the global market. And with lingering high inflation pushing up the cost of everything else from groceries to shelter. Even though energy prices have been cyclical in the past, there's a lot of concern this year that these prices will stay high for the foreseeable future. Mark Wolf of the National Energy Assistance Directors Association, which represents state directors of the Federal Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, known as LIHEAP, says their recent report found more than 20 million American families behind on utility bills. We've never seen prices as high, along with high food prices and high rent prices. So this is a potential crisis coming. Meaning the winter could prompt more tough choices for some households. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Back here at home, the time check is we're approaching 550, but let's get a quick look at the commute. If you are one of those early bird drivers, uh, don't expect to see a whole lot out there at this point. 281 north at Loop 410 and 35 there at upper level where you can see Brooklyn. Uh, a lot of folks moving out there this morning and maybe they're heading out of town uh, for the holidays, but just be sure to drive safe out there. While there's not a lot really to show you, we talk about some active road closures that are still in place. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. But again, big travel plans for the weekend and the week ahead, especially with Chris Christmas just around the corner. Let's talk gas prices because we haven't talked about gas prices in quite a while here in GMSA uh, from AAA at least. Uh, right now, the average gas price in Bear County is reported at $2.55. Kendall County, you're looking at $2.70. And right now, for our friends in Guadalupe County, $2.52. So if you plan to hit the roadways and maybe travel for the upcoming holiday week, then make sure you know what to expect when you head to the gas station. I was also reading this report from AAA. They said that uh, since Monday, the national average actually dropped about uh, seven to eight cents, which is fantastic. So good news around the country. Hopefully uh, we'll see that trend continue in 2023. That timed out <laughs> just right, didn't it? It did, didn't it? Right just before people are going to be hitting the roadways. Yeah. I'm one of them. So, mm -hmm. hey, if we can save a penny somewhere, that, that means a lot. That's good right. news. Good news. Yes, indeed. All right. I love this picture. Caption being locals always know where best place is for lunch. <laughs> are those egrets, I believe? <clears throat> kind of look, I'm kind of the, look like it. not a bird. I'm not the thing. ornithologist, so yeah. Um, I think one's an egret and one maybe a heron, but I'm not sure. Somebody's going to email us. Let us uh, know. Yeah. So, yeah, very pretty. Nice shot. Oh, they're all lined up. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, as you can see, we got a few clouds hanging around here. They may actually be moving a little bit quicker than I had uh, initially expected, but the, it is going to be leaning on the cloudy side throughout the day. 43 right now, 33 Comfort, 36 Bernie Stage. Yeah, it is uh, cold and it's going to be jacket weather now throughout the foreseeable future. We've got a hint of a wind chill in spots, just a little bit of a breeze, so it feels like 40 out there at the airport, 38 over at Randolph. And so again, we continue to see just a couple of these clouds. I was going for a bottoming out at 40 degrees this morning and then, which is just the about normal, a little bit below that, and we'll make it up into the mid 50s today at noon. Plenty of clouds all day long, basically just cloudy skies throughout the rest of today. 62 for a high temperature. Also, it's going to start to get breezier later on today as that next front approaches. This is going to give us a couple of showers. Not a great chance of rain, just one or two of them, maybe uh, later on this afternoon. I mean, just a small chance for that. Slightly better shot early tomorrow. Then we're going to be clearing out somewhat tomorrow afternoon and starting off on Sunday. Sunday's going to be a really cold morning. Then we get the clouds moving back in here Sunday and the chance of rain comes in here. Then by Monday, this is going to be the best chance of rain. Not great and it's not going to be any sort of a drop drop buster but on monday we will have uh, some showers around the area those will be clearing on out of here and then it's just going to be sort of tranquil weather a few more clouds midweek and notice by the end of the week then a lot of dry air moving on in here so here's the the latest storm system this is the one that's been around basically all week long produced the tornadoes around dallas earlier on in the week the severe storms down to the southeast blizzard conditions up to the north that thing is finally going to get on out of here. And like I said, we get some sort of modify a little bit as we go in toward the, the weekend. A little bit of a disturbance moves through to give us that chance, that little wave for some rain on Monday. Then the next Arctic air mass is going to start to work its way down in from Canada. Now, 
it will bring colder air in here. However, the center of this thing is going to be staying pretty much to the north and to the east of us. It's not like it's going to be dropping right on top of us. It will be cold. Definitely looks like a really good chance of hitting freezing by late next week, even in going into Christmas weekend around here. And as far as any precipitation, just not looking like it. 56 degrees, mostly cloudy skies today at noon and a high temperature then only up to 62. So we are going to be about three degrees below normal and a shower or two is going to be possible. Wouldn't uh, get your hopes up too high for that. 54 tomorrow in behind this latest front. So it's going to be chilly tomorrow. Some sunshine in the afternoon, clear skies, cold Sunday morning, more clouds, better chance of rain Monday, and then just sort of uh, on the cool side. Not cold, but cool next week. And then that big uh, front moves through late Thursday. And then cold. Then really cold, yeah. Really yeah. Cold. We're looking at a pretty good chance of hitting freezing, if not by Friday morning, by sometime over the weekend. That works. I, I don't remember, I mean, for a long time, uh, a cold, cold Christmas. Yeah, it's been the last one I really remember was, oh gosh, my boys were little. So it's been, it's been a while. 16, 17 years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's time. Thank, thank you, Mike. 554, 44 degrees. Video game featuring story elements from a song of ice and fire author George R.R. R. Martin recently won Game of the Year honors at the annual Game Awards. Up next, we take a look at Elden Ring. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Steph, will you start these out so I can look at the lottery page real quick and double check? Sure, let's start with pick three. 757, Fireball 8. Daily 4, 0, 9, 6, 2, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 9, 10, 19, 26, 30. Texas 2 step 11, 14, 26, 33, 29. Mega tonight's at $429 million. Fantasy of Elden Ring is receiving rave reviews. Elden Ring is this incredible fusion from writer George R.R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones fame and Hidetaka Miyazaki, who runs From Software. They've chosen to collaborate on an incredibly ambitious title. Why accept the burden of that race? Or be fooled by the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers? traverse what is called the lands between and you have got to go from dungeon and, and into castle and into caves and you're going to be fighting all kinds of really gruesome and mysterious and evocative bad guys so it's really experiential and exploratory and it's absolutely gorgeous and once all is done You can feel the just the tremendous respect from the game developer and the writer coming together to build something that is going to be one of the most highly regarded games of 2022. Go forth. Become Elden Lord. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I'm told it is a very complex game. Good luck. We don't want you to forget about the Share the Shoes campaign, which actually ends today. All donations can still be dropped out at any locations you see on your screen. They go to Zapatos, which works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. So drop by any of those SAPD substations with new shoes or new socks. And thank you. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, UTSA Runrun is getting ready for their big bowl game today in Orlando. We've got a preview. And Trans Guide right now. Let's get the Friday over with so we can move right into the weekend. It's a cold start out there. We went from 43 to 44 in the last 15 minutes or so. So it's plenty cold. 1604 at Petranco. You're watching GMSA. Ahead this hour, a woman fighting for her life after she was thrown from her vehicle on the west side of town. What police are saying about the crash coming up. They need to be held accountable because if not, you're condoning the killing of Ronald Green. You're okay with my son being murdered. Criminal charges announced for five police officers in Louisiana following the 2019 death of Ronald Green. What Green's family is saying about the law enforcement that about law enforcement that day just ahead. 
Here's the incredible thing. The owner says the kids were eating snacks in this room. They left to use the bathroom before coming back to that same room for nap time where the beds are were already set up. And in those moments that they were gone, that's when the tree came crashing down. Very scary. Several regions of the U.S. still under severe weather watch this morning. We're going to take a look at the deadly aftermath. And a new look for TikTok that could be coming to your phone. We'll take a look at the specs. And let's look out here with live cam. We're starting at 44 degrees. It's still chilly. You'll need that jacket. Live from KZ12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we're warmed up. I think we're finally awake. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. <laughs> it is December 16th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And a special happy Friday to all the teachers and all the kiddos who get to say goodbye for a little bit. That's right. Winter break just mm -hmm. about to begin, but we've got to get through our Friday first. And Mike Ostray just here with what we already know. And it's a cold start to our Friday. Yes, indeed. And we've got a couple of clouds that have already started to uh, sort of work their way in here. We're going to be clouding up throughout the rest of today, so it's not going to be as pretty as what it was the past couple of afternoons. And you can see just a few of those uh, clouds off there to the east. It's not really acting like too much of a blanket right now. Now, granted, we have actually gone up a degree in the past hour or so. We're at 44 right now, 37 Ball Verde, 36 Bernie Stage, and now freezing in comfort. So not everybody is clouded up, so just partly cloudy skies this morning. Not much of a wind chill. There's been a little bit of a puff of a breeze here and there, but it's um, there's really not any thing uh, blustery winds, but it will get windier later on this afternoon. Mountain Cedars on the high side. Same thing with mold update accounts going to be coming out, of course, later on this morning and temperatures are pretty much going to be holding steady, maybe fluctuating a degree or two throughout the rest of the morning. And again, those clouds will just continue to thicken up. And then later on this afternoon is when things start to get breezier. Northeasterly wind 15, 20 miles per hour, gusty 56 degrees today at noon. So the reason why the winds are going to be getting blusterier and or gustier is that yeah that works uh, 62 for a high temperature uh, breezier and also cooler today not only the cloud cover but also a front moving on through here uh, which will just sort of give us another nudge of colder air for the weekend may squeeze out a couple of showers later on tonight I wouldn't get too excited about that we do have slightly better rain chances though later on in the forecast we'll talk about Christmas week and that uh, big Arctic air mass is that going to pay us a visit details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authorities Steven, it's been fairly quiet. Still the case so far, Mike. Uh, hopefully it stays that way, but you never know when we get more folks out there. So we'll keep a close eye on things, but as always, make sure you're doing the same. Let's get a quick look around town. You can see 281 right there uh, by Loop 1604. So the commute's not too bad if you're making your way in from Boulevardy, perhaps. But 35 upper level at Brooklyn. This is one of those shots where we tend to see a little bit more traffic that builds up out there. And 35 at Cesar Chavez. Yeah, it's just getting a little bit busier minute by minute, and that's always expected. But we get you to the map, and it's just a ton of green out there. So again, another perfect opportunity to take advantage of these empty roadways. And if your travel plans are going to take you right here into San Antonio, let's check out these travel times. 28 minutes, because it's still pretty pleasant if you're traveling in those northbound lanes on I-37. Right now, a little more than half an hour, usual half an hour from US-90. If you're traveling in from Castroville in the eastbound lanes of 90, and right now that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes uh, coming in this early in the morning on I-35 northbound. But let's get you back here in town. 281 at Hildebrand. Watch out for that curve there. 35 at US-90. Another shot where we tend to see a lot more traffic pick up. We're going to watch things closely throughout the morning and have updates on upcoming road closures that will take place in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was ejected from her vehicle following a crash on the far west side earlier this morning. It happened around 2 a.m. near the intersection of Loop 1604 and Westwood Loop. Police say the woman was in a red car traveling on the southbound access road of 1604 when someone in a black vehicle pulled off of Westwood Loop and crashed into her. Police say the driver of the black car pulled into a parking lot, got out, and ran away. The woman was taken to a hospital in critical condition. The man on trial for killing a local K-9 officer has been convicted on all charges. The jury taking only about two and a half hours to reach that decision yesterday. Matthew Mireles was on trial for the killing of the Bear County Sheriff's K-9 known as Chucky. The charges included evading arrest, interfering with a police, animals, a police service animal, and eight counts of aggravated assault of a public servant. He faces 25 years to life in prison. He will be sentenced in February.
A warning about our next story. The video you're about to see may be disturbing. Criminal charges were announced last night against five law enforcement officers in Louisiana in the death of Ronald Green. He died after being arrested back in 2019. He was not armed. His family says police initially lied by claiming Green died in a car crash. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the story. This morning, three years after a black man died in Louisiana State Police custody, the troopers involved have been charged. Five officers have been charged. <laughs> Jubilation for the family of Ronald Green, who died in 2019. A grand jury Thursday indicted five officers seen on body camera video beating him. They face charges ranging from negligent homicide to obstruction of justice. Even though it was a small victory, we're still left heartbroken. Green's family also hoping the officers will be justly punished. There needs to be substantial time for a cop who murders while in uniform. They need to be held accountable. Police initially claimed Green died after a car crash. Despite police trying to suppress this body camera video, it was released two years later, showing Green's violent encounter with officers following a high-speed chase and crash after Green failed to stop for a traffic violation. Police claim Green resisted arrest. Video shows troopers kicking and punching him and using a taser. Green can be heard apologizing. I am sorry. One officer later admitted to hurting him. An autopsy found that cocaine in Green's system, head injuries, and a physical struggle were all factors in his death in addition to the crash. At the time, two of the troopers were reprimanded, but none fired. They claimed they used force for their own personal safety. Despite these charges, Green's family says they also want changes in police policies and procedures. I don't feel like there's public safety for you know, black and brown people. Green's family has also filed a wrongful death civil suit against the state troopers involved and their superiors, who they claim tried to cover up the truth. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, signs of a slowing economy, U.S. retail sales and manufacturing weekend last month, retail spending down 0.6%, the biggest drop of the year. Manufacturing also off 0.6%, the first decline since June. This as the Fed keeps up its fight against inflation, raising interest rates again this week and signaling more to come. U.S. labor market is still hot. Jobless claims down 20,000 last week. The four-week moving average dropping about 227,000. Unemployment filings are up from the spring, but still at historically low levels. Ford's cheapest F-150 Lightning electric truck will now set you back nearly $56,000. The company raising the price of its electric picked up twice in three months as it deals with steeper costs and supply chain issues. Tesla and other automakers are grappling with the same problems, warning higher costs are here to stay. There's a new way to solve problems on Instagram. Instagram.com slash hacked lets users get help recovering a hacked account and reporting impersonating accounts. It also helps with forgotten passwords. TikTok is trying out a new landscape video mode. The goal is to give users a better viewing experience and to challenge other rival platforms by appealing to people interested in informational and learning videos. So select users worldwide now have the landscape option. Spotify is slimming its live audio show options. Reports say at least six shows have already ended or have announced they're going off the air very soon. Live audio programming saw growth during the height of the pandemic, but interest has cooled since then. 611, 44 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, at least five people dead this morning as a result of hard hitting weather. We're gonna take a look at where in the country those severe weather warnings are still active. Outside with live cam. Oh, so close to Christmas now. One week from Sunday, right? Yes. Yes. Already. And uh, Mike is tracking a forecast that includes some, some colder air working its way into South Texas. We'll find out when that'll happen coming up.